Howdy, everyone. I'm working on the throttle quadrant position in the cockpit, and I've decided to go ahead and mount it to this piece, which is basically a cover plate that goes across the two spars. Actually, I'll show you that on the airplane. There's one of the cover plates there in place. So it's not an ideal location, but I'm going to try to make it work because I really want a throttle on the left side and I really like the look and feel of a quadrant as opposed to just the standard push-pull knob. So I've taken the cover plate off, obviously, and I've disassembled the throttle quadrant. You can see the pieces, parts here. So if you remember, the quadrant was held together with these longer bolts that go through here at the at these lower corners and then there are two other ones that go here on these corners since these have to pass through this piece I just put nut plates on the back side so now instead of having a nut they'll just bolt right into the nut plates and then of course on these ears since there's room behind them those will go back together with nuts I'll show you the back side of this so I had to cut an area for this bolt retainer to stay in place. And what you know it, I didn't have enough nut plates of one kind. So I used, I just used what I had. So this is kind of janky, but it works. And then I riveted here, obviously. So it's pretty straightforward. You just center this on your piece. You can adjust the height wherever you want it to be that's comfortable. Once you have the piece centered, then you put your hole for this retaining nut to clear. And then you're, you match drill these two, nut plate them. And then you can put these locations wherever you want with the rivets. I went with rivets. Just because this back plate, in theory, should never have to come off of here. You can obviously disassemble the entire quadrant from this side. So this plate can be basically permanently attached to this. So that's that. So at this point, I'm going to rebuild the throttle quadrant. Now, I'm not happy with how the quadrant itself is put together. Um, I should have showed you that before I took it apart, but there's there's a lot of play when you have these pieces These pieces basically rest on these pieces of tubing and there's a lot of room with that fit between this curve and the curve of the tube there's a lot of movement in there which I didn't care for so when you have, when you move the different levers, you feel, you basically feel some rocking before the actual lever moves. So there's like some rocking and then you can move the lever. And I didn't care for that. And I don't care for the feel with these spacers and the levers. The levers go with the spacers in between. I'm going to try to clean that up a little bit maybe put some grease on there I'm not sure but when I reassemble this I'm going to try to tighten everything up and get a better feel out of it so it feels more robust and a little bit more solid and then potentially I may bend the throttle lever lever itself I'm not sure I may try to put a dog leg in it to bring it out away from the side of the fuselage so again if you can imagine where this piece goes in the fuselage, let me show you what I'm thinking. So again, there's an existing piece there. The piece I'm working on, of course, is on the pilot's side, and it goes here. Now, as I had said, I went ahead and put the latch mechanism in place because this knob sticks out, and it's right where I'd like to have my throttle quadrant. So working around this knob, that helped me decide a height to put the throttle quadrant on that cover piece. So where I have it on now is probably the best place as far as keeping it, keeping it up off the seat and away from my leg, but keeping it low enough that it won't interfere with the knob. 
with my hand on it. Now it does, the throttle itself does sit relatively close to the side here. That's why I'm thinking about potentially putting a little bit of a dog leg on it, but I'm not there yet. So let me get to work on getting the quadrant itself reassembled. And I'll talk about that a little bit when I get through it. And then um, we'll kind of see if we can get this temporarily mounted back in the airplane, see how it looks. And uh, I may make, there is basically no cover on this side of the quadrant. I may make some kind of cover for it, but I'm not there yet. All right, talk to you soon. Howdy, everyone. I'm going to try a little bit of heat shrink tubing on these pieces of tube. These, again, are the pieces that engage with these brass supports. And like I said, the play between the two was a little excessive for me. So I'm going to try to take up a little bit of that play using heat shrink tubing. This is just a single piece of heat shrink. I might have to put another layer over top, but we'll see. I'm going to fit it together here shortly and see how that works. Another couple of observations. If you do take your quadrant apart, make sure you number your aluminum spacers because these are this one here. There's one that's a different size. It's a little bit wider than the other three. So make sure you make note of that. And just an observation on every single one of these, you can see that the inner, the hole in the center there, that's got a pretty good chamfer on it. The other side has none. They were all that way. All four of them were that way. So I went ahead and just put a little uh, deburr chamfer on each one on that backside hole because it was a little rough. And then I cleaned these. These needed a little bit of cleaning to make them a little bit more smooth on the faces. And then I did the same thing on all of the handles. You can see, I don't know if you can see that a little bit of silver around each hole. That's where I had deburred them because the, they, they didn't feel bad, but you, you can tell by looking at them that they didn't have a, a clean deburr around the perimeter. So I just went ahead and deburred these holes on each of these levers. Again, just little things. I'm just trying to get these cleaned up and get them fit back together and hopefully uh, tighten it up a little bit. So. Those are two simple things that I've found so far with the deburring. Got the heat shrink tubing on. I've cleaned the brass a little bit with some alcohol. I'm gonna put this together and see what happens. Okay, so obviously back at the airplane, that is the initial fit up of the quadrant. I've got it obviously back together temporarily. You can see the heat shrink tubing on these bolts here, the one bolt here and the one on the other side. And you can see how the brass pieces engage with that bolt. And it's that slop that I was trying to take up. That does work. However, um, if, if you are not going to put a face plate on here, I would recommend doing the heat shrink because that does take up the slop in those little brass pieces and it makes the entire assembly feel nicer, in my opinion. But I do plan on putting a, a front plate. I'm going to make a front plate for this. And of course, those two bolts will be... I'll put holes in the front plate for those two bolts. When I make the plates, I'm going to take those bolt holes and bring them in toward one another ever so slightly. So that will bring the bolts toward one another and it will take up that gap between the aluminum tube and those brass pieces. By bringing those bolt heads toward each other by the holes that I put in the plate, it should take up that gap and I probably won't need the heat shrink. But I'm not there yet. I'm just, I'm just talking out loud at the moment with my thoughts. 
So this is Clecoed in place. The uh, quadrant is bolted to it and assembled. I like the way it feels at the moment. No problems there. You can see the distance when the throttle is all the way back. You can see the, the distance between the throttle handle and the ball with the latch closed or with the canopy closed and the latch fully engaged. You can see the gap there for your hand to fit in. Um, let's see. Oh, you'll note the height from the bottom of the quadrant to the seat here. Now you have to keep in mind there's going to be an actual seat in here with cushion and it depends on what kind of seat you have and how thick the cushion is and things like that. You have to get your leg in there too. So I tried to have this up kind of high to clear everything but have enough space between the ball and the handle of the throttle that I'm comfortable. Coming around to the front Actually, I'll come around to the back side here. Try to film this. I should take these seats out so I have room to film. The seat backs should probably come out. Uh, again, the distance between the handle and the latch ball. Now, I haven't climbed in here yet to put my hand actually on this, but you know, there's no problem in here. With, with this um, and then you can see you've got a lot of space between this and the throttle handle so there's there's no interference problem in here however when you look at the throttle handle and the next knob over there's a good amount of space between these two here so what I'm thinking of doing, like I said, I may try to put a dog leg in the throttle lever. And what that will do, that will bring the throttle, it will make it a little bit shorter, but I think I have room in here for that. And it will also move it over, which will give me a little bit more space off of this. It will bring me over a little bit away from the ball. And it will also shorten it a little bit away from the ball. And since I've got room between the next lever over and the throttle itself, I may go ahead and dog leg this just a little bit. So I'm going to potentially do that. I'm going to figure out how to make a face plate for this. And then I'll probably remove the heat shrink. Once I get the face place fitted, and again, I'm going to make it so that it, it pulls these, these two bolts toward each other, which will close up this gap without the heat shrink. So potentially the lever and a face plate. Let me look into that, and I'll get back to you.